Line numbers are a favourite feature of lawyers and screenwriters. Just as page numbers keep count of a document's pages, line numbers help you keep track of your line count. To turn on basic line numbering, choose Page Layout, move your pointer to Page Setup, in that click on Line Numbers. This displays the line numbering options available. They are None, don't show any line numbers. Continuous, show line numbers throughout the document. Restart each page, the first one on every page is line 1. Restart each section, the first line of each section resets the line count to 1. Suppress for current section, line numbers in the current section don't show and the lines aren't included in the overall count. Line numbering options, this button is used to fine tune the way line numbers appear in your document. Here in this document, I'm going to click on Continues Line Number. Customizing Line Number. If you want to fine tune the appearance of line number, here's the step. Click on Page Layout. Move your pointer to Page Setup in that. Click on Line Number and select the Line Number option. This opens up Line Number dialog box. In that, click the Line Number button in the bottom right of the box to open the Line Numbers box. If you need a little more control over your line numbers, use the Add Line Number in checkbox to turn line numbering on and off. The radio buttons give you another way to set the same options that you find on the Line Numbers menu. It's the three text boxes that offer something different. Start at Use the Start At box to set the starting number for the count. Say you want to start at number 1001 instead of 1. Just type 1001 in this box. From text, this box lets you position the line numbers on your page. Enter a large number to move the line numbers farther away from your text. Count by, sometimes you don't need a line number at every line. It makes your page needlessly cluttered. Set the count by number to say 5 and you'll see numbers only at line 5, 10, 15 and so forth. After setting all your numbering options, click OK. You can see the line numbers in your document. Hyphenation options. Without hyphenation, a word is too long to fit on the line. Hyphenation helps make text more attractive on the page and easier to read. From the page layout, move your pointer to page setup and click on hyphenation menu and this shows the inbuilt styles. They are None. No hyphenation at all. Automatic. Word makes hyphenation decisions based on some simple rules that you provide. Manual. In this scheme, Word asks you each word it wants to hyphenate, giving you the final decision. Use manual hyphenation when you need to be particularly scrupulous about your grammar and when you need to be certain that you don't hyphenate hyphenating automatically. Word 2007 allows you to automatically hyphenate your document through the hyphenation dialog box. To set automatic hyphenation, here's the step. From the page layout tab in the page setup group, click hyphenation and select automatic. Hyphenating manually. If you already typed text into your document but would like to include hyphens, select manual hyphenation. Word will search the document for words to hyphenate and then ask whether to include a hyphen and where to position it. From the Page Layout tab in the Page Setup group, click Hyphenation in the drop-down, select Manual. The Manual Hyphenation dialog box appears with the first instance of a possible hyphenation found in your document. Word will suggest grammatically correct hyphenation divisions. To accept the hyphenation, click Yes. If you do not want to hyphenate the word, click No. Word locates the next word you may want to hyphenate. To cancel the manual hyphenation process, click Cancel. Document Views Word provides you five ways to look at your document. To select a view, go to the View tab and choose one of the document views on the top left side of the ribbon. You have another great option for switching from one view to another that's always available in the bottom right corner of Word's window. 
you can click one of the five small buttons to the left of the slider to jump between print layout, full screen reading, web layout, outline and draft views. Each view has a special purpose and you can modify them even more using the other commands on the view tab. Print layout. The most frequently used view in Word, print layout, is the one you see when you first start the program or create a new blank document. In this view, the page you see on your computer screen looks much as it does when you print it. This view is handy for letters, reports and most documents headed for the printer. Full screen reading. As the name implies, this view is designed primarily for reading documents. It includes options you don't find in the other views, like a command that temporarily decreases or increases the text size. Web layout. This view shows your document as if it were a single web page loaded in a browser. You don't see any page breaks in this view. Along with your text, you see any photos or videos that you've placed in the document, just like a web page. Outline. For many writers, an outline is the first step in creating a manuscript. Once they've created a framework of chapters and headings, they dive in and fill out the document with text. If you like to work this way, then you'll love Outline View. Draft. Here's the no-nonsense, roll-up-your-sleeves view of your work. You see most formatting as it appears on the printed page, except for headers and footers. Page breaks are indicated by a thin dotted line. In this view, it's as if your document is on one single roll of paper that scrolls through your computer screen. This view is a good choice for longer documents and those moments when you want to focus on the words without being distracted by page breaks and other formatting facts. Show and hide window tools. Word gives you some visual aids that make it easier to work with your documents. Tools like rulers and grid lines don't show up when you print your document, but they help you line up the elements on the page. To view the Show Hide Window tool, go to View tab in that you can find the Show Hide tab. This consists of Ruler. Use the ruler to adjust margins, set tabs and position items on your page. Grid lines. When you click the grid lines box, it looks like you've created your document on a piece of graph paper. This effect isn't too helpful for an all text document, but it sure comes in handy if you're trying to line up photos on a page. Message bar. The message bar resides directly under the ribbon, and it's where you see alerts about a document's behavior. Document map. If you work with long documents, you'll like the document map. This useful tool appears to the left of your text, showing the document's headings at various levels. Click the document map, which displays your mapped document dialog box. By clicking a heading, you can jump to that location in your document. Thumbnails. Select the thumbnails option, and you see little icons of your document's pages in the bar on the left. Click a thumbnail to go to that page. In general, Thumbnails are more useful for shorter documents and for pages that are visually distinctive. Zooming options. When you're working, do you ever find that sometimes you stick your nose close to the page to examine the details? Word's zoom options let you do the same thing with your screen, but without looking nearly as silly. To work with zooming options, on the View tab, click the big magnifying glass to open the Zoom dialog box. Depending on your current document view, you can adjust your view by percentage or relative to the page and text. More on that in a moment. Zooming by percentage. On the Zoom dialog box, you find controls to zoom in and out of your document by percentage. The view varies depending on your computer screen and settings, but in general 100% is respectable. The three radio buttons, 200%, 100% and 75%, give you quick access to some standard settings. For in-between percentages like 125%, type a number in the box below the buttons or use the up and down arrows to change the value. Here I am setting 125% to this document. For a quick way to zoom in and out without opening a dialog box, use the zoom slider in the bottom right corner of your window. Drag the slider to the right to zoom in on your document and drag it to the left to zoom out. The percentage changes as you drag. Zooming relative to page or text. 
Go to View tab. In that, click the magnifying glass icon which displays Zoom dialog box with four radio buttons with plain Zoom settings. They are Page Width. This button will resize the page to fill the screen from one side to the other. It's the fastest way to zoom to a text size that most people will use. Text Width. This button zooms in even farther because it ignores the margins of your page. Use this one if you have a high resolution monitor. Whole Page. When you want to see an entire page from top to bottom and left to right, click this button. It's great for getting an overview of how your headings and paragraphs look on the page. Many Pages. This view is the equivalent of spreading your document out on the floor and then viewing it from the top of a ladder. Changing page view from a ribbon. The ribbon offers radio buttons for three popular page views. They're a quick way to change the number of pages you see online without fixing with zoom controls. To view those options, go to the View tab. In that, click on the Zoom drop-down button. Here you find these options, namely One Page. This view shows the entire page in Word's document window. If your screen is large enough, you can read and edit text in this view. Two Pages. In this view, you see two pages side by side. This view is handy when you're working with documents that have two page spreads, like booklets. Page Width. This button does exactly the same thing as the Page Width button in the Zoom dialog box. It's more readable than the one page and two page options because the page fills the screen from edge to edge, making the text appear larger. 